Okay, um, if, if we're ready to start, I'd like to extend an extremely warm welcome to everyone on this Saturday afternoon. You're about to experience uh, a very interactive communication workshop. As we all know, communication is the cornerstone to success in whatever field you might be. Uh, we all talk about this big word networking and we all wonder what is networking. Um, networking is in a very subtle way the art of communication and we're very happy today to have Ananj Prasad, uh, an IMC member, a member of the Knowledge, Skills and Education Committee, founder and MD of Skillsphere, uh, a very enterprising organization that has touched over 2 lakh students and over 500 institutions across the country. Uh, we here at IMC are extremely proud to have you with us Ananj today. I know you've made a difference in many, many lives, and I'm really hoping that you can help touch the chords of some of our members today and skillfully, uh, as MD of Skills here, teach them how to communicate and how to use effective communication to build strong lifelong networks. So thank you so much for being here with us. And I would also request uh, Mr. Juza Korakiwala, President, Indian Merchant Chambers, to open the event today with his opening remarks and then over to you, Anash. Thank you so much. Thank you, Viva. Thank you, Viva. And good afternoon to all the participants for this very unique event. I would call it Public Speaking Skills and Communications. <clears throat> Welcome to Mr. Anash Prasad of Skillsphere for uh, conducting this uh, event. Uh, as you know, our own Prime Minister, his popularity is, is there mainly because of his, obviously of his leadership skill as well as his art of communications. Communication is, is plays a very, very important role in all aspects of life as Vibha just mentioned, that if you can communicate effectively and uh, uh, skillfully and with great clarity and transparency, I think half the job is, uh, is done. Mm. Careers and jobs have become dynamic, vigorous and are rapidly changing. Today's youth and young professionals need to have the skilling advantage to stand out and quickly adapt to the fast changing uh, work landscape. Effective communication skills are fundamental to success in every aspect of life, ever so in a competitive business environment. As professionals progress into larger roles, strategic communication capabilities become a key influencing factor to realize their goals, objectives, vision, and mission. Many, not many jobs, but I would say all jobs require strong communication skills to enable them to assume leadership positions in future. We have seen over and over again, political leaders, right from Winston Churchill to Hitler to the good ones and the not so good ones, they all have had excellent communication skills to be where they were in their, in their journey. As human skill development in any nation is key for economic growth, it is necessary to have the art of communication as it, as it is the language of leadership. Effective communication is therefore the key interpersonal skills and learning how to improve communication has many benefits. Before I conclude, let me briefly tell you about IMC, IMC Indian Merchants Chamber of Commerce and Industry. It's a premier chamber of commerce with a rich legacy spanning well over 100 years of excellent service to trade, industry, and commerce. With its membership base of over 5,000 members and over 150 trade associations affiliated to it, chamber represents and its interest of over 400,000 business and industry establishments across the country from diverse sectors of the industry. Through its various expert committees, IMC provides policy inputs for the government, both central and state, and is continually engaged in interaction and policy making at various levels. The chamber is now a cradle for nurturing young talents and promoting emancipation of women through young leaders, forum and ladies wing, which have become embodiment of youth, enterprise, positivism, proactive thought leadership, and movement for women empowerment and entrepreneurship. The theme for this year is engaging Maharashtra, building India. And education is not an end, but a means to an end and enlightened life. So let's hear it from our expert speaker, Minanish 
Prasad. Once again, I welcome you all to this interesting seminar, and I'm sure there'll be a great messages and learnings this evening. Thank you very much. Over to you, Vibha. Okay, thank you, Mr. Parakiwala, for that warm note of introduction. And uh, Anansh, without much ado, we're super excited. Uh, everyone, Anansh has just expressed uh, that the uh, workshop today is interactive. So put down your guards and be ready to interact with Anansh to make the most of this workshop. Uh, over to you, Anansh, and thank you once again for doing this. Thank you so much, Mr. Kurakiwala, to the Indian Merchant Chambers, to Vipa, the Knowledge Committee of the Indian Merchant Chambers. I'm a proud member of it. And of course, to all of you wonderful participants who have joined us today for this session, which I hope by the end of this hour has been extremely effective with a lot of good takeaways for all of you. As Vipa mentioned, um, a communication skills workshop um, is impossible without two-way communication. So let's make sure that this is not a monologue, but a dialogue. I would really appreciate um, interactions taking place over the duration of the session. The session is quite activity oriented, very uh, question oriented. Um, when you talk about public speaking and communication, there are multiple dimensions in which it can be taught, it can be disseminated. And honestly, there is not a single dimension which does not involve two-way interaction. So we need to make the most of this as far as possible. Um, beyond Excuse this- me? Uh, Yes. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, sh uh, should I- um, uh, uh, allow people to unmute themselves um, or is it going to be two ways yeah. to chat we, we are going to have yeah I was just coming to that um, yeah. in general there are going to be a lot of questions that I'm going to be asking uh, for which um, you can always uh, mention your answers on chat and beyond this uh, if you'd like to speak up just use the raise hand option on zoom um, hosts and co-hosts if uh, somebody raises the hand please allow them yeah, to unmute sure, themselves sure, sure, when I take sure. their names all right. So yeah, there'll sure. be a lot of interaction taking place. Please use the Zoom chat box effectively. And beyond this, there are certain questions. There are certain aspects where there will be participation, where I will be asking for volunteers. Please do raise your hands. I'll recognize you. And uh, then the hosts and the co-hosts can probably ask you to unmute yourselves. I think right now, based on uh, the current setup, you have all been muted. So let's quickly start off with today's session. Um, as is always the case um, for me, Whenever I start off a public speaking workshop, a communication skills workshop, or any other workshop, uh, for me, it's very important to get my breathing into place. Communication, public speaking doesn't start off with voice projection, modulation, or logical fluency. It starts off with getting our breath in order. And uh, I have this very simple exercise that I do, and um, I'd love it if you do it along with me. I'd like everybody to wiggle their wrists if possible. It helps in getting rid of all the nervous energies. Take a deep breath in and breathe out. I do it a couple of times just to ease my nerves. And we are all set to start off. We are all set to start off. I'll very quickly start off. I'm going to be sharing my screen. I think the host has disabled screen sharing. Uh, if I could be made a co-host so I can share my uh, presentation and I'll very quickly start off with the entire session. Yeah, you can share the screen. All right, thank you very much. So today's session is a session on async communication and public speaking skills for networking. It's a one hour session. And I'll quickly jump into it. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. Well, I'm the founder of a Pan-Asia 21st century skill development organization called Skillsphere Education. We conduct a plethora of public speaking skills, quizzing and personality development workshops for two lakh plus students and adults across India and the Middle East. Um, I'm a proud alumnus of Cornell University. I recently became a member of the Cornell Maha 60 Accelerator as well. Um, I'm a TEDx speaker and adult public speaking coach a lifelong learner and a sports enthusiast. So that's a little bit about me uh, before I start off. And in the next point, I'd like to tell you very clearly that if I ever went to a networking event and tried to approach any of you and try to introduce myself this way, trust me, it would never work out. That's really not the best way to be introducing yourself. And I'd love to know why. I mean, if you agree with me, I'd love for all of you to put into chat why you believe that that kind of an introduction would probably not work. Please feel free to put your answers up on chat. We are a big group. Uh, I would have been happy to engage by a conversation as well, but it's going to be difficult seeing the numbers. So please keep putting your um, uh, opinions on chat. If any of you went to introduce yourself in any networking event, you can picture yourselves in any networking event. If you went to picture, if you went to introduce yourself the way I did, I'm quite sure it would probably not work out. You'd probably not be able to get that kind of a connection. 
um, yes, a lot of people said it's casual, it's too vague, too fact-oriented. Others become nervous. Fair enough, uh, you might sound intimidating. Um, Self-introduction should be a storytelling process, very monotonous, completely fact-oriented once again, to surface level. Lot of different, different opinions coming in. Yes, absolutely. I completely agree with you. Um, yes, absolutely. There are many reasons due to which this kind of an introduction would not work out. And today's session is actually going to be focusing on all of those very aspects. The way you present more than the information you present is one of the most important facets of networking. Before we proceed into the session, I'd like to tell you what the session is not about. Well, the session is not going to be covering tools of networking per se, LinkedIn, Clubhouse. I'm sure there are a lot of modes and opportunities to understand that better than I would potentially explain. Um, I'm not going to be talking about networking tips for specific formal or semi-formal um, setups. I'm going to be talking about generalized networking seminar-based skills, all right? Um, Honestly, when we talk about specific philosophies, there are a lot of philosophies for networking that have been covered brilliantly by some of the gurus of this field. If you have not read the book, Dale Carnegie, How to Win in Friends and Influence People, I'd strongly encourage you to do so. Olivia fox Cavain has this concept of the charisma myth, which is brilliant too. You know, a lot of us feel that some people are able to present themselves better. Some people are able to communicate better simply because they have more charisma. Olivia Fox actually breaks that entire myth by telling us that charisma is not something that's inherent. It's not something that you're born with. It's something that can be developed. There are processes of developing it. And those who you see with charisma are not the only ones who will have it. So that's another book that all of you can read. It's something that really helps with overall conviction, self-help, communication, as well as networking. But I'll leave that to the gurus. What my session today is primarily focusing upon is three things. Firstly, essential public speaking and communication skills for communication. Um, stuff that all of you need to have in place before, during, and after a social meetup. I'm going to break the entire session into three parts. It's going to give you an opportunity to reflect about your own skills. This is a learn at your pace session. All right. So I'm actually going to try and put you into the hypothetical situation where you can reflect and experience for yourselves what it would be to be in a particular networking setup. And I'm going to try and run you through it. It's very important that you learn through experience, you learn through reflection, and we're going to try and create that environment today. We're going to talk about certain public speaking specifics that are important, such as voice projection, eye contact, body language. And lastly, this workshop will give you an opportunity to understand the significance of networking for you. Because honestly speaking, networking is a very composite word. It can mean a lot of different things for different people. Um, and honestly, everybody networks for a different reason. I'll tell you my reasons for networking. But uh, very quickly, let's jump into the activity right now. And I will start off with the first part. So let's talk about the entire part of networking that takes place before it. right? Irrespective of the networking event that you decide to become a part of, there are a few things that always stand. The ability to express yourself is one of the most important things, all right? And there are multiple aspects of expressing yourself, but I always ask this fundamental question, whether it is a 60-year-old highly experienced adult or a seven-year-old student who is just stepping into the field of speaking and expression, all right? And I'd like to ask you this question. I'll give you 30 seconds to reflect on it and then raise your hands using the raise hand option on Zoom if you can do so. So my question is, if I asked you to speak about yourself and only yourself for a period of five minutes, how many of you would be confident of doing so, right? I want you to picture yourself in a networking setup, whatever it is, probably an IMC networking event. And if you were given a platform to express yourself and speak about yourself for five minutes, how many of you would be confident of doing so? All right, I see one hand, uh, Pushpa has raised a hand, great. Uh, Mustansir has also said confident. You can raise your hand using the raise hand option on Zoom. It makes it easier for me to see. About three, four, five, six people have raised their hands. All right, we are seeing a few more hands going up. Right, we have about approximately, um, let's assume we have about 85 people in this session. I see about eight to 10 people who have raised their hands for this. That's very neat. Okay, what about four minutes? Few more people are also mentioning on uh, chat. Okay, three minutes, two minutes, one minute, anyone? 
all right if i asked any of you to express yourselves for anything less than 3 minutes if i asked you to express yourself even for 1 minute how many of you would be confident of doing this in a networking setup all right i see a few hands going up we had about 11 or 12 hands go up for it few have also mentioned on chat that they are confident of expressing themselves and that's very neat well the point of the matter is that i always ask this question because i find it very amusing i find it very interesting um irrespective of the platform that i ask this question on typically not more than 10 to 12 percent of people are able to raise their hands in affirmative for it and it's funny because if we were asked to speak about our business we were asked to speak about our profession we were asked to speak about you know our hobbies we probably be able to speak about it for 10 15 20 minutes an hour some of us conduct lectures on what we do but when it comes to speaking about ourselves it's often difficult to even express ourselves for anything more than one to one and a half minutes and the interesting thing as per a lot of research um, i belong to cornell university and the cornell ilr the labor relations school has conducted a lot of research on this the interesting thing is that 98 percent of the people in the world can't speak about themselves for more than 18 seconds and um, i think that is a concerning statistic because when we talk about public speaking or when we talk about networking it always starts with self-speaking um, trust me you're never going to have to speak about yourself for five minutes the point is there are a lot of aspects that you should be able to express about yourself to be a comfort to be a confident networking individual or just a social being right and most people aren't able to do that being in the balance two percent would definitely help you about it would, would definitely help you with it in fact i'd like to share a few other myths and facts well it is definitely a myth when we talk about networking that people are more interested in what you do rather than who you are because trust me when I say that you are your biggest sales pitch, whether I'm selling one of our educational programs, whether I'm publicizing one of my education programs to a principal or um, to a large educator, a large level educator, you know, they're always more interested in how they perceive me than they perceive what I do. So you are your first sales pitch, you are your biggest sales pitch. So while you need to be good with whatever you're trying to network related to, it's very important that you have the confidence and conviction to express yourself about yourself. Now, the fact is, yes, networking does start with first impressions. It doesn't end with first impressions. I don't believe that first impressions are last impressions, but they definitely are a very important aspect of it. In fact, networking doesn't start for most people because they do not have the courage to make the first impression, to make the first move, or even express themselves when asked to do so. All right. Um, often a lot of us go with completely ready plans. We have a ready pitch, which we are ready to express. Uh, we know how we have thought it through about how we are going to be introducing ourselves to different people. But trust me, it never works out that way. We have to be able to have that level of improvisation and spontaneity to be expressing ourselves in various environments. And the last myth is, well, I asked you this five minute question, but none of you would ever have to speak about yourselves for five minutes at a networking do. In fact, nowhere. If anybody asked you to introduce yourself, uh, most of them would be sleeping by the second minute if you go, went ahead and introduced yourself for five. But even though you won't ever have to do this, it's a very interesting exercise to be able to achieve. If you're able to speak about yourself for this duration, you would have probably answered all those questions that most people might want to ask you about yourself. All right, And it is for this very reason that we're going to be starting off with this exercise that I like to call the five minute introduction. I think um, networking, as I said, starts with self-speaking and having the ability to confidently express ourselves is very important, right? Um, there are typically five questions that I find being the most important, irrespective of setup, that you should be able to answer about yourselves because most times they're not, uh, more times than not. In fact, one of these five always comes up, all right? So the five questions are, firstly, any incident or experience that changed the way you perceive the world. And this can be something very light. It doesn't have to be something groundbreaking or shattering. I'll in fact share an incident or experience that I have had. It serves as a great icebreaker often. Uh, it serves as a mode of storytelling, which one of uh, the members of our cohort today spoke about as well. So if there is an incident or experience that changed the way you perceive the world or changed your perspective on things, that's something that you should be able to answer at least to yourself. 
The second aspect is your characteristic traits. Are you a bubbly person? Are you a chirpy person? Leadership qualities, creativity, um, whatever it is, your characteristic traits. The third point is your hobbies. What do you like to do in your free time? All right, what do you like to do in your free time is something that often serves as a great icebreaker and we'll come to that later. The fourth aspect, which often most people are a little conscious to share is what is your unique selling point? And everybody has a unique selling point. It might be that, you know, you're good at art. Even if you're an engineer, you, your unique selling point might be you're good at art or, you know, you're very good at coding or you're very tall or whatever else. But everybody has a unique selling point and being able to touch upon it, being able to focus upon it is very important. And then, of course, your personal details, your name, your company, your city, and so on and so forth. All right. So these are five very important questions that we should be able to address. All right. And in fact, questions one, two, and four, the incident or experience, the characteristic traits, and the unique selling point actually are applicable to your service or product as well. Question number one, the incident or experience that changed the way your product was viewed actually makes for a wonderful point of conversation on it or your service the characteristic, tra characteristic traits of your service, the unique selling points, we should be able to answer these questions not only about ourselves, but also our product, all right? And you can think about it. A lot of you would have probably gone to a lot of networking setups in one way or the other. If you made an attempt to engage with people in a large way, one of these five questions would have been addressed, all right? So it's very important for you to be able to address these questions. And if you do so, trust me, you'd be able to speak for a lot longer than five minutes. And that in fact is the first activity of today's session. I'll give it a try myself so that we can have everybody thinking about it as well. I'll go back to the slide so that you all can see these five questions. And I'd love for one volunteer, we have only one hour. I'd love for everybody to reflect on it, but one volunteer to probably try it after me. That would serve as a good precedent for everybody else, all right? So I'll give you my five minute introduction and I'll go in line with these questions. And uh, so let's go. So. To be honest, I'm a public speaking coach. I'm a communication skills expert today in multiple ways. And I run this Pan Asia skill set development organization focusing on public speaking primarily. But I was not always a very confident public speaker. In fact, growing up, I was one of those individuals who was extremely conscious to express himself. I was an academically good student, but not one of those who would go up in class, raise his hand, and then just speak up. I was very happy doing my own stuff and preferred not being called up to speak. Until one fine day when I was in grade six, uh, my English teacher actually kept an extempore speaking competition, speaking on the spot. And she kept it the next day, and she said that all of us in class had to participate. Now, I was mortally scared to participate. I tried not to go to school. Mom sent me, and as luck would have it, I was the first person who was called up to speak. And the topic that I was given to speak up on was my school. And I'd spent a lot of time in that school to be able to speak about it for probably 10 minutes. But when I was standing in front of that entire class of about 45 students, I just froze. Uh, my knees were shaking, and I just didn't want to speak up. Um, at that point in time, my teacher, she actually uh, picked a pin up is what she told me. She said, I have a pin in my hand. And she stood behind me and said, Anansh, if you don't open your mouth, I am going to poke you with that pin. And I'll take the pin out from the other side of your body until you open your mouth. So she threatened me in this way. And I was mortally scared of that pin. And I started speaking. And I was able to speak for over one and a half minutes. I, in fact, won that competition. And uh, that was actually that one small incident or experience that changed the way I perceive the world. I changed the way, uh, it changed the way I perceive myself. From then on, I realized that public speaking was not as complex as I was making it out to be. I went to participate in numerous debates. I was the head boy of the school and multiple things through school and college until I find myself life coming around circle. I'm a public speaking coach today. So even today, that one pin is something that often scares me. It's that one pin that gives me that level of um, confidence to go ahead and speak up to. So that is that one incident. Uh, my characteristic traits are I am a confident individual, very creative. I believe that I have good leadership qualities and I'm an ambivert. My hobbies are I love sports. I'm a huge sports enthusiast, love reading, love uh, playing squash and badminton. And my unique selling point, the one thing that would make me stand out in a crowd of people is my ability to adapt. I believe that I have the ability to communicate with anybody right from eight years to 80 years old. And my personal details are, my name is Anansh Prasad. I'm the founder and managing director of Skillsphere Education. 
I have been born and brought up in Mumbai and I'm a very proud Mumbaiker and I hope to spend the rest of my life in the city too. Right. So that is my long form of introduction. I could have, of course, spoken for a lot longer, but that was just the basic idea of it. I'd love for somebody to volunteer from the crowd as well. Anybody in the audience who'd like to volunteer and introduce themselves. Uh, this in itself is also a networking event. So if anybody would like to go ahead and take this opportunity, I'd be very grateful. Please raise your hand and we'll make sure that the hosts or the co-hosts unmute you. Come on. Anybody? Yes, Ms. Archana, please go ahead. Please unmute Ms. Archana for us. Yes, please go ahead. Uh, my name is Archana Vidnare and uh, I am uh, helping professionals and students in, co in building their confidence through communication skills. Because I remember when I was in my schools, I really correlate with Anch sir when he was also expressing his story about how did he went ahead in public speaking. I could see that uh, the same thing happened to me as well in, when I was in schooling. The basic reason that I was very great, I was a, I was a, a brilliant student in my school, but I was very poor in expressing myself in front of class or schools. And there had been so many opportunities that came my way, but I just uh, could not grab them up because I was so scared and I had a limiting belief that I am not capable of doing it. Until and unless I, uh, until I wanted to restart my career after my uh, marriage, uh, you know, when I, I was looking for an opportunity to restart my career and uh, regain that confidence back again, there was an opportunity uh, came up uh, to train students in English language. And I started doing with it with, without even thinking that I don't want to be a teacher in my, even in my wildest dream, I never thought doing it, but I shifted my thought process and I started doing it. And in a couple of years, I have to shut down that as well. But in meanwhile, I came, I came to know this word for the first time in my life about public speaking. And that completely changed my life. Today, I'm also founder of uh, one of my academy called Building Confident Speakers Academy, where I train professionals and students in public speaking and communication skills through shifting the way they communicate through power of words. And uh, my character traits, if I want to say, is that I, I believe I am an influential leader. I communicate well. I express myself uh, fearlessly. My hobbies, I love to cook. I'm a very good cook. I love to cook rice recipes a lot. And uh, my unique selling point, I could say, is that uh, I... I am very resourceful without if I even if I don't have any resources, uh, if I'm falling short of anything in my life, I still make a point and make sure that I am going ahead with it, with whatever resources I'm available with and make point to do that in my life, whatever I have decided. And my personal details, my name is Archana Varnari. I'm, I come from a very small city called Sangli and my company name, as I told, I'm a founder of Building Confident Speakers Academy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Arjuna Ji. Thank you so much for introducing yourself and taking the initiatives. Something that's very important in any networking setup as well. Thank you so much for doing so. Uh, we'll quickly move on. Yes, I hope everybody else has also reflected on this. You don't need to introduce yourself at this forum, but try and reflect on these questions and try and come up with answers for them. It becomes extremely important. All right. So that was the first thing that I would like to touch upon. The second thing is a little more important, a little more relevant to networking setups where you imagine that you know you hardly have any time you don't have much time to really introduce yourself imagine yourself in a networking do where there are 50 individuals or just a social setup where there are 50 individuals everybody knows each other at max at an acquaintance level you really don't know each other too well um, you're not going to have that kind of time to leave an impression or introduce yourself so you're definitely not going to speak for five minutes but you need to be able to do the best that you can in the short time that is possible okay so in this kind of a scenario, there is this concept called elevator pitches that exist. Okay, they exist for sales pitches. Elevator pitches is a word that is used uh, interchangeably for a lot of concepts that involve expressing yourself. But in networking setups, elevator pitches are short pitches of 20 to 25 seconds where you provide a basic amount of information about yourself to engage the listener who probably want to ask a little bit more. All right. 
And the word elevator pitch comes from a hypothetical situation where you imagine that you've gotten into an elevator on the fifth floor with somebody who you'd really like to speak and introduce yourself to. And you only have time till you get out of the elevator on the ground floor which is probably about 25 to 30 seconds. And then both of you go your different ways. So you have that short period where you have to leave that kind of an impact. All right. The question is, how do you do it? Uh, well, there is no standard mechanism of doing this. It totally varies from person to person. It depends upon what kind of a person you are, what are your strengths, what are your skills. But there are three basic pointers that apply to anyone and everyone. And I'd like all of you to apply it to your own situations. And because this is a shorter introduction that takes at max 25 to 30 seconds, and seeing we have about half an hour, 40 minutes left, uh, we'll have two, three volunteers if you'd like to introduce yourselves, right? So three pointers are firstly your name and designation, all right? Your basic coordinates, your name and designation or your profession, your skills, strengths, or services. What is it that you're good at? And the third point that often works in networking setups very well is a fun fact about you that will help the person remember you. Because trust me when I say, um, in a large setup, people are not going to remember your name. Okay, People are not going to remember you by name. They remember you for either something that's very peculiar about you, something very interesting about you, or something that's fun to remember. All right. So try and think of something of that sort related to yourself, which would allow you to endure yourself to the others. Right, so these are the three points, and I'll give you my simple elevator pitch for your reference. And I'd love for some of you to think about it and probably express yourselves. And the next thing that, of course, um, I'm going to be talking about, uh, Mr. Sandeep, I'll address your question. I just saw your question, I'll address it in a second. Um, what I'd like to tell you all is that in networking setups, the initiative is the most important. So let's try and use um, this workshop slash seminar for this particular purpose. All right, try and take the initiative. Most of us are not able to network because we do not end up networking. We don't take the initiative, all right? So the three pointers are your name and designation, your skills, strengths, and services, either of the three. And then finally, a fun fact about you that will allow the other person to remember you, all right? So I'll do that for you. Well, my name is Anand Prasad. I'm the founder and managing director of Skillsphere Education. My strength lies in my ability to help people come out of their shells. Even if an individual stutters, stammers, or suffers from a major lack of self-confidence, I believe that I'll be able to help them learn how to express themselves. A fun fact about me is that I'm very superstitious about my hair. I do not like cutting my hair before any big event in life. Um, if everything goes well, I'll be a father in about three months, and I'm trying not to cut my hair till then. Right. So, well... That was my simple elevator pitch for you. I just tried this out at a networking event a couple of weeks back. Worked out quite well. But, uh, well, that was mine. I'd love for some of you to actually try this out for yourself. Would anybody like to give it a try? Let's give it a try. Let's try this out. Anybody? And then I'll address the question by Mr. Sandeep Jen as well. Please raise your hand on Zoom. Uh, if you'd like to unmute yourself, you're going to have to use the raise hand option on Zoom. Or if you say, I'd like to do it on chat, I'll make sure that the IT... Uh, um, individual actually unmutes you. Anybody, come on. Simple elevator pitch, three points. Would anybody like to try it out? All right, I see no hands going up, but I'll give you a second. Uh, in the meanwhile, I'll address Sandeep's question. Sandeep asked, uh, isn't the intro, in the long form of intro, shouldn't part five come first and uh, followed by 241. He suggested a mechanism which is different. The structure can be different. Well, honestly, it's something that's very variable. It totally depends upon the person, how they'd like to introduce themselves. A lot of people like to start off with their personal details first. Um, in my case, I always like to share my personal details last. Um, for me, when I'm really talking about introductions, um, I try and draw a picture of myself in the person's mind, and then I try and name the picture for them. All right. It seems to work out much better for me where, um, you know, they have a clear idea of where I'm coming from as a person, my characteristic traits, my hobbies, what is my unique selling point. And this person is called Anansh. It works out better for me that way. But if you'd like to follow a different method, this is not a structured set of questions uh, from one to five. You can always try it in a different way as well. All right. That's what I'd like to tell Mr. Sandeep Jain. Um, as far as elevator pitches are concerned, do I have any volunteers? Anybody at all? All right. I hope you all try this out um, beyond our session. I think it's a very important thing to be trying out. And we'll, of course, come back to it later on. So 
these were two very important things to keep in mind before you go for a networking event understanding how you express yourself understanding what all you can say about yourself about your product about your service very important aspects and of course understanding how you'd introduce yourself to somebody in less than 20 to 35 seconds okay and it will vary this is something that you cannot fix for any environment it's going to vary depending upon where you go all right so that is something that i'd like to tell you about right let's quickly move on to part 2 of today's session which is during the networking event so of course during the networking event is the most important part and we'll be spending a lot more time here so i'd like to ask you all there are two types of people that exist at a networking event and in fact in any formal or informal setup there are the people who approach others and there are the people who get approached who wait to get approached to speak with somebody all right there are the people who take the initiative the people who do not take the initiative okay who are a little scared who are a little conscious who don't want to go up and express themselves first so i'd like to ask you how many of you in a networking setup have been or believe that you are approachers people who go ahead take the initiative and express yourselves how many of you? you can raise your hands you can say it on the chat as well all right you see a few hands going up all right perfect all right quite a few hands going up quite a few people also expressing on uh, chat right fair enough and how many of you believe that you are those who are comfortable waiting to get approached okay few my hands going up for that as well all right so we seem to have a combination of approachers and approached um, my experience would suggest that we typically have a lot more approached than approachers and changing that would actually form the starting point of being a good networker all right so how do you approach there are many important aspects associated with approaching some people have said that they are a mix of both depends upon the setup fair enough absolutely um taking the initiative of course always helps um but taking the initiative the first step in a social networking do would be to break the ice you know to initiate a conversation and that tends to be the most difficult aspect of any networking setup all right most conversations don't happen because nobody started them off all right and that's something that we need to learn how to break in different setups and i'm going to be talking about how to do this well when we talk about breaking the ice or just walking a few steps to a person standing next to you it always starts with the mind you got to be ready to jump okay um you can take the horse to the water you cannot make them jump into it so you need to start changing that aspect of your mindset which is making you resist the process of approaching someone all right you need to be ready to jump you need to be ready to express yourself all right so it starts with the mind and it's easier said than done it takes people years but from event to event or from opportunity to opportunity try and work on the small wins where you're expressing yourself a little bit more meeting three people meeting five people approaching a few more people that always helps okay the second step of breaking the ice is if you're speaking with a person do not sell yourself do not start by selling yourself people are not interested in it if i was to introduce myself the way i started with in the beginning it wouldn't work try and engage the person there are multiple different ways of doing this i'll talk about it in the last section of this slide but uh, trust me when i say networking is not very different from the basic mantras of modern day digital marketing think of you know the ads or some of the posts that you'd find engaging on an instagram or facebook or a linkedin they typically are providing you with some information that would help you in life something interesting probably a fun reel all of these things are actually engaging you before the product is actually sold the best advertisements that you see always have something fun before we actually see the final name of the brand or the product whether it's fevicol or amul or otherwise same thing applies in networking setups you can't be selling yourself immediately you need to engage a person first you need to get them to be interested in you and then speak about it and once again there's no cookie cutter method this varies from person to person from networking setup to networking setup it requires you to perceive you have to be perceptive and understand what kind of people you are speaking to try and engage them first and then you can start the process of networking by telling them about your product your service or about you in general all right and when we talk about the process of breaking the ice it always requires common points of discussion the question is what can they be 
well. There are five that I've often used. Um, random questions about, you know, schedule of the event or views about the event. I've often approached people and just talked to them about, well, don't you think that the speaker is dragging on? I mean, the speech is dragging on or what's the next event? I'm sorry, I just wanted to ask you, what's the next event taking place? That often leads to a basic conversation. This is a very weak and simple method of introducing yourself, okay? It's a very weak and simple method of introducing yourself or breaking the ice with somebody. Weak as in because it's um, it doesn't have too many stakes associated with it. All right. The second question that I always use, and I've often used it, is what I call the academic interest or the curiosity question. Okay. I often see people with name tags with the name of their company on it, or I see people... Um, you know, um, holding a certain file, a certain book or a certain uh, document. And I often ask them out of academic interest or out of curiosity, I'd like to know why are you holding that file? Or I'd like to know by any chance, um, did you actually also read this book or are you still reading it? You know, there are multiple different things of this sort, which can also ask out of curiosity. I'd like to know, for example, um, where did you buy your blazer? It's great. That's something that I've often asked people. So, that's what you call the academic interest or curiosity question. Just a positive way of breaking the ice and people are always going to end up answering you unless it's something that you shouldn't be asking. So um, that's another way that you can possibly try and break the ice. The third thing is the name tag catchers. I always look at the name tags. I always, I make sure that I'm seeing the name and I'm seeing the organization they belong to. And I try and look for a common point of discussion. If I see somebody who's from Cornell, for example, if I see somebody from the education field, I say, oh, I'm also from the education field. and I run this skill set development organization. What about you? Okay. Um, the fourth way of breaking the ice is a common discussion topic. <coughs> Excuse me, I still have a residual cough. Uh, a very common discussion topic is current affairs or otherwise. Uh, one of the best ways of breaking the ice is to try and have a discussion um, about some of the most common things taking place in their world and their application to your life. Um, so, Trust me when I say most people actually don't approach others because they're not confident of what they'll be asked or where the discussion will meander and whether they'll be able to speak about the situation confidently in that environment. So keeping yourself abreast with the happenings of the world, keeping yourself updated and using those as a mode for discussion or just slipping them in into discussions really, really helps very effectively. All right. And the last one is the toughest, but the most straightforward one where you actually have the courage, we have mustered the courage to just go ahead and say, hi, I'm Ananj Prasad from Skillsphere Education. Glad to be meeting you today. What about you? All right. So you don't really go with a background to try and introduce yourself to a person. You just go ahead and take the initiative. You try and control, control the conversation. So these are five ways in which you can break the ice. There are multiple others, but these are five that I have used very, very commonly. And in fact, that brings me to a very important point. Um, to be able to network, you need to know a lot more uh, beyond you and your product. You need to know what is taking place in the world, the business happenings, the current affair happenings of the world, and um, they always come into conversation in some way or the other, and they are the easiest modes of breaking ice. Okay? For you to, for example, discuss what is taking place in Britain, the United Kingdom, where the Prime Minister seems to be finding himself in slightly tough waters often becomes a very interesting point of discussion, which eventually leads onto you and your product. Okay. So I always, always ask this question. I love these kinds of hypothetical questions, but I think just like the five minute question where I ask you to express yourself about yourself, this other question is also very important. And this question is, well, can you think of five things that have taken place in the world in the past week and their application to your lives? All right. Um, I think irrespective of whether you go to a networking do or not, every one of us should be able to answer both parts of these questions in every single week. <clears throat> and the start of each week, please ask yourselves whether you can think of five things that have taken place in the world in the past week and how they have impacted you. This is, of course, a much larger conversation, uh, which goes well beyond uh, the contents of today's session. So I'm not going to elaborate on this, but there is every single um, I mean, every single issue that's taking place in the world often has an impact on our lives and we should be able to think about them, all right? So this is once again, probably before our networking meet, but try and make sure you have this question answered in affirmative, all right? I've got a question from Yasna, so I'm going to address that. Uh, she says that I'm usually a very confident person and I have no problem in starting a conversation in public. 
I'm also quite all right when I am on stage in a group or accompanied by others. However, when I'm the only person that has to address an audience on stage, or if I have to go for a solo oration, I very often start trem trembling and start he hesitating in speech. Any suggestions to overcome this? Um, well, that's a very interesting question, Yasna. And in fact, uh, that is the advantage of speaking in a networking do over speaking on stage. A networking event is very important from, is very different from solo public speaking, where the spotlight is on you. Networking events are less intimidating. So I'm glad, I guess, you'd be able to manage those well based on what you're saying. Uh, but suggestions to overcome uh, situations where you start trembling on stage. Well, firstly, start breathing. One of the best ways to uh, deal with trembling, to deal, deal with uh, nervousness, anxiety, is to make sure that your breath comes to normal. Um, it's something that you need to start practicing. Uh, one of the first things that most of us start doing when we are in these situations is we let negative thoughts go through our head. Instead of that, try and focus on breathing, try and get your breaths to normal. Try and build up a hypothetical situation where you believe it's not just you, there are a bunch of people and try and look at it as a dialogue, all right? Those kinds of aspects psychologically, of course, help a lot more with getting rid of this fear. Um, beyond this, of course, there are specific public speaking essentials that you can focus upon. There's a way of maintaining eye contact where you quickly move from left to right called the tennis method of maintaining eye contact where you're looking at everybody but actually looking at no one because you're not maintaining too much of eye contact with anyone. So in that kind of an environment, you're actually speaking to everyone and everybody feels like you're addressing them, but you aren't actually looking at them for long durations to affect your confidence. That's another tip. There are multiple others. And of course, I'd like to address this question in detail later on. So, well, that was with regard to Yasna's question. So coming back to the point that we were discussing, well, keeping abreast with the happenings of the world is extremely important, all right? So, I talked about breaking the ice. The next very important thing in networking setups is getting involved in conversations. So it's one thing to approach a person. Often you'll observe in parties or in social setups, formal or informal, people are already interacting, all right? And if we are slightly late, we need to find our place in the entire crowd by finding a group who we'd like to go and speak with, all right? And that involves getting involved in a conversation, very important. Another skill that a lot of us often don't pay heed to, all right? Um, in order to get involved in a conversation, we need to find a spot in the conversation. Obviously, we cannot start off with whatever we have prepared or whatever we'd want to speak. We first have to become members to the topic of conversation, all right? One of the best ways to actually do this is to very casually approach, you know, sideways or um, not not in the direct way right in front of the people who are conversing, slowly and steadily move towards the conversation, you know, smile, nod, listen. So uh, automatically people realize that you are also getting into the conversation. And at some point in time, do not present your views directly. Start off by saying, I completely agree with Archana or I disagree with what Amar stated and then state your point. So you become a smaller member in the larger conversation. All right, and slowly, steadily break ice to the point where you become an active member in the conversation. Eventually, what will happen is that when you start off by seconding or disagreeing with other points of people, eventually you'll reach a point where you will become an active member if you're proactive and you'll introduce yourself and then you can go ahead and network about your product. All right, you can move the uh, discussion to areas that you want to, but getting into the conversation slowly and steadily, firstly through body language, through smiling, through nodding and listening, and then going ahead and agreeing and disagreeing with points will get you into any conversation you like, all right? In this kind of an environment, it's very important for you to be patient, okay? Be patient in the process, contribute. Contribute slowly and steadily, even nodding, saying yes, no, yes, yes. That will automatically get them to start listening to you slowly and steadily. Once that happens, start engaging and then you might reach a point of controlling conversations, okay? Not shying away becomes very important. Okay, don't feel that, you know, I can't be a member of this conversation. They must be knowing each other. Well, it's a networking event. You've gone there to meet people. So you are going to have to meet them in one way or the other. So try not to shy away. And when we talk about the aspect of control, that's in fact very important in any conversation that you have in a networking event or otherwise. Control doesn't mean that you keep speaking. Control can also mean that 
you know you are able to control the flow of the conversation you are the one that's leading the topics of conversation from one to another and control often becomes important that's a trait that you will eventually develop in due course but slowly and steadily working on it really helps all right and control doesn't come from the very beginning if you start it you'll look like an extremely aggressive person not even an assertive person you don't want to be doing that you want to actually subconsciously control conversations all right so this is how you focus on getting involved in conversations another very important aspect of networking during the process is communication skills and timing all right i often state that the most important communication skill is actually listening it's not speaking all right especially in setups where you're speaking with people you need to listen to them as much as you speak and in fact speaking needs to be reactive a little more than active so initially you might introduce yourself and break the ice but after that you need to listen to them and then speak to them based on what you understand they are comfortable expressing themselves or speaking about right so speak listen speak needs to be the mantra not just speaking all right it's always a dialogue not a monologue all right and in fact there's a pro tip the moment a person starts excessively nodding or fidgeting smiling or loses eye contact is when you know they're getting bored all right I'm sorry I think I got muted by mistake yeah so that's yeah, the moment yeah, yeah I, that's the moment you know people are getting bored so that's the moment you try and change the topic of conversation try and shift conversation in different directions or you know just allow the other person to speak often you are able to sustain conversations by understanding what the other person is expressing in fact you need to allow the other person to express to understand what topics to move the conversation into because most times people are not going to be interested in what you are saying beyond a point so you need to actually follow their lead all right so that's something that's very important something that most people miss out on and of course timing speaking for short durations becomes important you need to know when it's time to move on or add more people to a conversation right so that's about communication skills and timing another aspect that's very important is the multiplier effect right i like to call it the multiplier effect um when you are in networking setups or when you are speaking in larger uh, groups try and build your group rather than seeking individual people i have often seen a lot of individuals actually finding it more comfortable to approach a single person who is just standing an individual who is just standing without a group than approaching a group because they find it more intimidating but trust me when i say that trying to build your own group of people or seeking groups is often more effective because you get to network with more people together and of course when people are speaking with each other you get more information about what they are interested in that you can then take forward to speak with them about okay um in fact what's very important when you're building your own group as well is to engage others um just like in any group discussion setup it's a very basic fundamental of group discussions you'll often see those who are extremely vociferous who love to express themselves and you'll also see those who are very quiet who are very meek who are very shy who don't want to speak up okay um a good networker is somebody who encourages them to speak up as well so if you see some of those people in a group you can always say xyz what are your views what do you think about it that will also allow them to break the ice and you get somebody more on your side to probably network post that okay so try and multiply have your own group that's networking with more people you'd probably be able to get more visiting cards or contacts by the end of it all right so don't try and seek an individual often people find it easy just to speak with one person try and look at more people try and look at groups so the multiply effect is a very strong skill to develop as a communicator in networking setups right so we covered um many separate uh, aspects of communication on networking during uh, discussions firstly breaking the ice of course we talked about different ways of doing this i talked about the important 5 minute current affairs question getting involved in conversations is supremely important uh, we talked about ways of doing that we talked about communication skills and timing while speaking very important and finally the multiply effect right so these are four points that i thought i can touch upon during this session about networking during the process of networking so we've talked about before and during and we'll finally talk about after the networking event is over 
okay i think uh, this envelope that you call hey am follow up is super important and it's also time barred in nature you know this envelope um people are not going to remember you for more than probably 24 hours if you really want to make sure that um, they remember you and you're able to probably sustain conversation with them just make sure that you follow up with them whether it's via linkedin whatsapp call text message whatever it is just make sure typically call is not the route that i would follow i'd go on linkedin but uh, make sure that you follow up with them then and there because if you don't um, you've probably um, lost that particular lead in networking so try and do that it often takes a little bit of courage to go ahead and call um, and probably people are not convinced by that process either so try and go ahead right on linkedin here it was a pleasure meeting you we discussed a bunch of things would love to catch up um, here's my um, company link for your reference something of that sort that follow up is very important i've often seen and i've experienced itself uh, it myself i've burnt my fingers where i have spoken with a lot of people uh, taken numbers but not connected them for two weeks message them after that couple of people have actually forgotten who i was yeah so don't do that so of course this comes way after the networking process but make sure your written communication is sorted in these places within 24 hours make sure that you write something right so these were three different aspects that i thought i'd cover as a part of this session before the networking process during the networking process and after it now i'd like to talk about certain very important public speaking skills that all of us need to keep in mind all right so public speaking is of course an art it's a science that has many facets to it it will take probably six months to cover it and work on it with any one of you but there are certain things that you can keep in mind and of course i'd like you all to also reflect on public speakers uh, the president of the imc uh, really talked about uh, mr modi and how you know his public speaking skills are one of his unique selling points for sure but each one of us likes different public speakers and there are things that stand out about them and i'd love you to think about what those are and how you could probably work on them but there are five things that become supremely important in networking setups all right one of the first things that's very important is voice projection voice projection is the ability to throw your voice okay there's a difference between shouting and projecting your voice we shouldn't be shouting we should be projecting and i'll show you the difference well this is voice projection this is shouting and this is not voice projection very different uh, voice projection is simply our ability to utilize our notes to the best of uh, their potential all sections of the notes they often say when we are singing keep paid se gao paid se gao literally means to project your voice use your notes to the best of their abilities your vocal cords um try and learn how to project your voice you can learn a lot more about this people who project their voices automatically have that surround sound when they are speaking that kind of drags or pulls people towards them even in networking setup so throwing your voice is a very important skill to be able to develop all right the second skill is voice modulation okay if i was to speak in a single tone without changing my pitch throughout the duration of this session i am quite sure by the end of it most of you would be quite bored because storytelling especially if we look at it for uh, young children if you have young children or if you see it for anybody always involves narrators who change uh, the entire structure who change the pitch at which they speak becomes very important to do that and of course it's an art that you learn in due course but few things that you can keep in mind for this are firstly remembering how to pause we often forget how to pause at full stops and commas and i always say this in a fun manner to all my students before um, any language was written it was spoken so it wasn't an artist who decided to put a comma or a full stop in sentences it was actually the requirement to breathe to actually modulate our voice that resulted in these additions to um, any language so please remember to pause the moment you pause your voice automatically gets modulated and remember to emphasize on important words like i'm emphasizing on the word emphasize right now that's important that will automatically result in voice modulation the third aspect to keep in mind is eye contact eye contact you know the eyes really have it they really speak a lot more than your tongue and your mouth in most cases so your your ability to maintain eye contact with people is very important very very important to maintain eye contact body language too all right never look like uh, you know you're one of those who's quite disinterested in the conversation always have a positive body language i'd love to elaborate on it but we're going to run short on time you can read about it and lastly the speed please be slow and steady 
don't try and rush through your entire pitch i've seen that happen on multiple occasions where people are actually rushing through their pitches all of a sudden simply because uh, you know they're scared they are lacking confidence to do so right so that was related to some of the important public speaking skills just come to my last three slides i know i'm running short on time so i'm going to be quick with it um, i'm just going to wrap up everything that we have talked about i hope that you'll have found the session effective uh, firstly before the meet find the conviction in yourself remember the short form and the long forms of introduction that we spoke about during the meetings ice breaking engaging multiply effect listening and getting involved in conversations are super important and post the meet following up what i'd like to also give you as key takeaways is at the end of the day just be yourself you know it's easy to actually read books and presentations and try and emulate people but everybody is a very different individual when it comes to communication public speaking and networking just try and find the best version of yourself by keeping the basics in place there's nothing like a best networker networking is highly subjective both person by person as well as event okay and the setup so that's really everything i wanted to tell you about um this is a little bit about skills fair education well we run a bunch of public speaking quizzing and 21st century skill development workshops uh, for students as well as adults both short term and long term i have this 6 for 6 public speaking cohort that we take once every year and love to share more details about it and we have something for junior kids as well where we conduct one is to one public speaking sessions we have 24 sessions where we train students many of them are tedx speakers as well we have over 22 <coughs> tedx speakers too who have come through these processes and i'd love to share more information about this but for now what i'd like to tell you is as far as this one hour session is concerned i'm just wrapping up because i know we are short on time um i have prepared a small set of notes uh, which i have attached to a feedback form i'll be sharing the link for that with all of you and if you could fill it up at the end of it there's a link to get the notes for the session so please go ahead and collect the notes and if there's anything i'd always love to speak with any of you over linkedin or otherwise and i'd like to end with this one question that i've always found very interesting and i'd like to think about i'd like all of you to think about it so i watched this movie called 21 it's one of my favorite movies where um, there's a student who actually is applying to harvard medical school and he's gone in for his scholarship interview with the dean and he really needs that scholarship he can't afford the high tuition fees that harvard medical school requires him to pay so he needs that full scholarship and he expects the dean to be asking a bunch of questions related to medicine and he's an academically brilliant student so he thinks that it's going to be cake walk for him he prepares for 15 days and when he finally goes to that meeting the dean asks him a very different question that question just has two words he says dazzle me dazzle me means surprise me make me feel really surprised so if i was to ask any of you that question i'd like to know what you'd like to say about it you know just think about it for yourselves if you're able to answer this question confidently to yourselves trust me you'd be very good with your communication skills about yourself at the minute right so think about it a lot of key takeaways from the session i'll just share the notes link with you very shortly as well and i really thank, like to thank uh, the imc thank for the, the opportunity Thank you so much, uh, Anand, for doing this for our members and for the extended IMC community. Um, you definitely dazzled all of us with your expertise and your knowledge. Thank you for making it interactive. Thank you to all the participants for uh, interacting with Anand, for putting your comments on the chat, and for all the volunteers who were brave enough uh, to speak up on the session. Obviously, that was a first step in communication. Uh, do connect with Anand uh, if you would like to learn. more about skill building and communication uh, but for now uh, on behalf of the indian merchant chambers and the knowledge and skill committee at the imc a very very warm thank you to anand for spending his saturday afternoon in educating all of us uh, thanks anand and if you'd like to say last few words before signing off please go ahead um thank you so much uh, deva for the opportunity the imc knowledge committee has been doing some brilliant work this is in fact one of our many we have been conducting a lot of events this is one of the few to start the year off we're going to be having a lot more and we hope to see you in a lot of these sessions would like to thank the president as well i've shared the feedback form as well please do fill it up whenever convenient for all of you and i look forward to seeing all of you become the best versions yourselves hopefully networking with you all in person once uh, the pandemic is over and i'd love to see how we work it out there thank you Great. Thank you. Thank you, Anand. And thank you all to all our participants. Thank you. And thank you to the IMC team for helping facilitate this on a Saturday afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.